Hello, everybody, and welcome to our class on the ChIP-seq pipeline output. Uh, congratulations, you're probably here because you ran your first ChIP-seq and you want to see what you got out of there. I've been saying there's lots of analyses done, on quality controls, and so we're just going to briefly go through some of the main highlights of that. Um, data you'd want to present at a lab meeting about how your ChIP-seq went, um, or quality of data of other people you've downloaded. We're doing all free data from other people, same thing. It's uh, a lot of information that comes out. So we're here in class 2023 on your GitHub. Um, I'm on mine here. Um, and we're in 03 Nextflow. <clears throat> and we just ran our first ChIP-seq um, in the last class. And now if we go in here, um, this is where we're going to look and we'll have all of our results in here. Now, this isn't going to show up on your GitHub because it shouldn't be tracked because um, we've changed our git ignore um, as such. So go into the directory of where you ran your poll to uh, chip seek. And I'm going to do that uh, by showing you just um, browsing in um, the in my um, our studio here. Um, just the same thing as what I just toggled through is Nextflow. And then here is my poll to NF core. And this is what your yours should look like after we ran the, we all ran the same pipeline and this is where the results i'm going to show you are probably exactly the same ones you got that's how reproducible this all is um okay so there's our design file run.sh next flow out and error oops misspelled airy um but uh yeah so that's what we did and we got a results folder and a work folder Work folder you can pretty much remove um, at this point to save memory, um, and uh, the results are in here. Um, so first, just let's go to the NF Core pipeline. As I mentioned, it, I'll say it over and over again, but documentation is your friend. Go read it, figure out what's happening. And here I am on the NF Core Chip Seek pipeline that we just ran. And I clicked on output documents, which gives a little overview of everything that was run. I'm not going to go through all of this because it's it's a lot. Um, but the first thing you have to do is read, uh, take the sequence reads from your chip seek and align them to the genome. That takes quite a while. It gives you quality control on how those reads look, how the um, complexity of your chip versus input are, and we'll go over that in a second. Um, strand shift correlation things. Not necessarily that how important they are, but just also how many peaks were called, um, where the peaks were called relative to genes, all kinds of things. And we're again gonna go over this. Um, and another new nice feature is if you have multiple replicates, like we had four replicates, it'll tell us um, how many had the same um, replicates in here. So this is the documentation page, tells you how correlated they all are, um, et cetera. So, that is the NF Core chip seek, but we will have something very similar in our results folder. So let's take a look at that. Um, so we're in our results folder, and the first one to go to is Fast QC. Um, that's the multi, or sorry, the multi QC. Uh, so this is the one that has all of the, your actual data of the thing we just looked at. <clears throat> and there's everybody's going to have a broad peak folder, and then you can click on this. You can either file transfer it to your computer, or it's on your computer. Open it in a web browser. And uh, it has the everything for each sample in these lib things. Um, I start with the merged, which has all of your samples in one instead of looking at each one individually, um, personal preference. But you can also look at them individually up above. And so what we get right away is how many reads there are mapped and unmapped. And we can already see this sample has more reads. That won't be a problem because um, the peak calling algorithm will take that into consideration. Um, this is the raw data that's making these bar plots, and we can see the percentage of reads on chromosome X and Y, and then all the chromosomes. So we see that <clears throat> there's more peaks on chromosome 16. Um, this is, you know, biased by length, obviously, um, where chromosome 22 is one of the smallest, and chromosome 1 is one of the biggest. So, um, but you might, if you're studying something on the X chromosome, see an enrichment there, and you'd already have a result. And you can hover over here and it tells you which, which each of these samples are um, in here. Okay, so this is uh, the complexity curve. Um, <clears throat> you can read much more about it just by Googling it. Um, but 
really what it's saying is as you add more and more reads, how complex are you? At what point are you saturating? And so if you start, uh, the more bowed you are, the more sort of complexity um, there is in the um, sample and that because of that complexity, it starts to be read over and over again. Whereas if you're more widespread, it takes a longer and longer time for you to saturate your um, reads overlapping in the same places. So usually your input is the least complex and that's good. We see that here. And here's replicate four. We might want to keep an eye on it. To be honest, it, it doesn't correlate too, too much. Uh, polar 2, 3A. Um, and here's our other control um, and polar 2. So there's some variation here. Um, but we'll deal with it more on a peak level later. Um, but it's good to know um, what your data looks like kind of on a raw level. Okay, so again, more X, Y, and chromosomes. Um, base distribution, this is great. We have equal numbers of A, T, and G, and C across the reads. Um, duplicate reads are low. That's this black box here as a percentage. Um, again, and you can go through this much slower. I just want to highlight a couple of these things. Again, finger plots. Um, here's replicate one, two, three, and four relative after they've been normalized by input. So that helped a lot. And um, there we go. All right. So more information. Where did they land? In, you know, poll two, we did kind of expect to land at a promoter of a gene, which is represented at the zero point of where a gene starts. So this is encouraging that our peaks are occurring relative to gene annotations at the start of genes where this um, gene functions. Pol R to SA, um, we didn't do, but would be enriched out here a little more than this one. Um, okay, that's one of my favorite ones. So that's nice because we could have gotten the result that the peaks were just all across the gene. <laughs> um, and that would have told us something too. Um, we can see the uh, total peak count. We get about 30,000, and pull r 2 a has a bit more. Um, this is the uh, fragments of reads in peaks. This usually one above 0 0.1. That means that at least 10% of your data led to a peak. Um, and there's a lot of sprinkled reads around the genome. So uh, in my sort of experience, 0.1 is good, and we're well above that. We will, as we run more of these, see some of them don't pass this. And it's a newer, more stringent score, but it's, again, good to keep in mind what's happening here. <clears throat> we can see uh, promoter feature, gene features here. So exons, uh, pull two is, has a small proportion. This big orange part here is promoter TSS. So most of the peaks are there. And more and more and more information um, here. So that is a lot, and um, <clears throat> you can go through that and um, uh, work on it uh, a little bit more. Okay, so now let's go back to our results folder. And um, I could spend time on all these, but I, I wanna make this you know, sort of brief and highlight the main things. Um, we went over the multi-QC, um, which has all of our QC analysis in it. Um, the other one to look at um, that I look at is pipeline info. Um, you can look at this in a web browser and it tells you about how the pipeline ran. So you might wanna change your config file for different sorts of RAM. Like this CPU usage was very high for BWA um, alignments. And you can see for different um, processes that how each one completed where this is in the work folder. Um, this is the key for that. Um, stuff you don't really use much, maybe the first time you run a pipeline just to see in the future how long it's gonna take um, to run that. Um, so, okay. That was <clears throat> results multi-QC. We checked and uh, pipeline info looked at that. Trim Galore is just a read trimming program that's not uh, really worth looking at. We're gonna have a whole class on IGV. So in here, we got a bunch of uh, files that can go into IGV um, that we can visualize the raw data. Um, and we'll, we'll do that um, in a subsequent class soon. Um, Okay, so uh, back to results, did IGV genome is just gonna be information about the alignments and fat, same with FASTQC. 
BWA is the file folder that has the most uh, stuff you use use like routinely. And that's here. This has this merged library. We all have it. Um, and you can see the BAM files. These are uh, how the reads aligned and they're they're quite large. Um, and then uh, the peak calling algorithm that compared the amount of reads in the IP of polymerase versus the input um, was done in max here. Um, so if you ever want to go back and take peak files from a different thing and run and count the number of reads in those peaks, um, feature counts you would use on these type of files and they're big. So I typically keep them in case I want to run um, windows and, and quantify within there and do some statistics across samples. That's for later. Um, so they're useful. Um, and then really most of the stuff we want is in max, um, broad peaks were called. And <clears throat> we're going to use these um, broad peak files here, like r one peaksbroadpeak And this has the start, stop, and a bunch of other information about um, where peaks were called. <clears throat> so all of this data right from running that pipeline, you have everything here. Um, and are ready to start doing analyses, which is in, in the next class. So um, yeah, that is most of the uh, main output files here. And so what we are gonna do now is run your own ChIP-seq. You're gonna pick out your favorite proteins. I have them all down here. These are <clears throat> that um, same design file structure um we did in the last class is here for a ton of proteins and you can uh, search for your favorite protein um, and its replicates in here and um, then we're going to move forward and start to practice our skills and analyze these if you're at home again you can just copy this um, and go to the encode portal uh, functional genomics and search for that file and you can get the fast queue here so you can go through that design file um, and click on the fast queue and then download it again as you did for poll two so you might want to they're big files so you might want to um, you know just pick a few so that's what we're going to do that's your exercise for this class is to uh, run the pipeline that you have the config file already you have a run.sh and you really just need to change the uh, design file to your choosing. I will give you a hint that you remember the controls. So when you look at, these are the controls on the top. And when you look here, make sure to remember that this last column is controlled by and that you get the fastq file for that one as well in your design file. That'll be very important. Um, all right. Well, congratulations. And uh, we will move on to start analyzing our data. But at this point, you've learned a few languages and how useful NextFlow can be to just run your data, uh, free data that we got from the internet, downloaded, ran it, and got a ton of information back just um, from running the pipeline. And I bet you all got the same results, meaning that this code is 100% reproducible. Okay, with that, thank you very much. See you next time and be well.